And now let's talk about the Dolphins a little bit. So, of course, we look at the the, the AFC East. Yesterday, you, you, I think your takeaway after watching the Jets, watching the Dolphins, and of course watching the Patriots, you were, you know, the the answered the the, the, the question that didn't need an answer was answered. I think we already knew the answer to who's going to be the AFC East champion. I mean, I honest to God, I, I, I think I'd shave my head bald if the Bills did not win the AFC East this year. I mean, I don't think there's a thing on the planet that I wouldn't bet on the Bills winning the AFC East. They are just head and shoulders above everybody else. They're a head and shoulder above Miami. I mean, they're, they're a full Josh Allen body length above the Patriots and the Jets. Now, Miami, I got to give credit. Mike McDaniels in his first game, it's not easy being the head coach of the Miami Dolphins. It, it certainly can't be. It certainly can't be the, the an easy job to be the head coach of the Miami Dolphins in your first game against the great, greatest coach of all time on the opposite sideline. And I know that, you know, the Patriots, their roster is abysmal, but it's still Bill Belichick, and he's found ways to win games with less. We all know that. Bill Belichick, nobody's been better ever than just finding a way to win when you least expect it. And I think the days of that are done. The days of expecting Bill Belichick to pull one out because he's Bill Belichick are over. I think a lot of that died in the playoffs last year against the Bills. I truly do. That was a soul-crushing defeat for Bill Belichick and that entire organization. And they got worse this offseason. And you know my thoughts on that. I came into this year saying, not only is New England not going to threaten for a playoff spot, I wouldn't be shocked if they finished dead last in the East here. You watch yesterday, you watch the Jets play the Ravens, and you watch the Patriots play the Dolphins. I mean, are the Jets any worse than New England? I I mean, and if they are, it it is is marginal at best. And the Ravens, in my opinion, are a much tougher opponent than the Miami Dolphins. Those two teams right now could be fighting for the worst team in the league, the Jets and and the Patriots. I am not kidding you. The the Patriots, and I think this is something that people need to start getting used to. I know it's going to be a crazy ride for me as far as really, like really uh, realizing it. I mean, really just kind of basking in the reality of it. They are quite literally one of the worst teams in the entire league. And it was on full display yesterday. They can't do anything. Their defense, awful. Offense, non-existent. It's just not there at all. And the Miami Dolphins worked them. Speaking of those Miami Dolphins, like I was mentioning a little bit earlier, yeah, they looked they looked decent. They looked good. They looked like a wild card football team, right? There's tears to this. We all know that. You got the tier right now where I would put the Bills, the Chargers, and the Chiefs, right? The top tier. And then you look at the AFC, and it's really tough to kind of come to a conclusion after yesterday the teams you thought would be up there the Bengals the Colts perhaps the Titans if you thought so Broncos on right now hell they're losing seven nothing to a Seattle Seahawks team you want to talk about some of the worst roster in the league uh that's there I got it on right now I'm shocked Russell Wilson is going to be you know I can't, I can't imagine if he loses this game plenty of time left though. that's early in the first quarter But I look at the Dolphins, and yes, they definitely have the makeup for a a wild card team, right? They definitely do. But you got fans in the stands, and I'm sure you saw the video. It's been all over Twitter by now. You got fans in the stands going, bring on Buffalo, bring on Buffalo. Look, I would understand maybe you have that mindset if you beat the Patriots of uh, 2000 and whatever. Anything other than 2019 and beyond. But you beat a Mac Jones-led Patriots team that quite literally might not win six games this year. And you got fans saying, bring on Buffalo, bring on Buffalo. And I love it because that is just, it's hilarious. The Dolphins, I 100% could see them threatening for a wild card spot this year. 100%. Tyreek Hill elevates that team almost immeasurably. They moved the ball better yesterday than I saw them do all last season under Tua Tonga by Loa. And it had nothing to do with him. I mean, there are some throws that that guy makes that literally any other starting quarterback in the league right now, you would trust to make that to make that throw but him. 
The arm strength is, it's maybe the worst I've ever seen. It, it really looks like every throw is a struggle. And if he has to throw the ball on the run, you can forget about it. Tyreek Hill bailed him out of a couple of really bad throws yesterday. Perhaps that's what they needed, and this is what a lot of people had said. They, they said, hey, you know, Tua might not be the guy. Hell, he probably isn't. But Tyreek Hill can make a guy like that look much better than he is just based on his ability. And I think we saw a bit of that yesterday. I also think it helped that they played a Patriots team that is just flat out bad. And I think they might even be worse than people thought. And people thought they were going to be pretty bad. I know I did. I, I thought they were going to be bad. I thought they were going to lose to Miami yesterday for sure. 20 to 7. Uh, I mean, th- th- that just goes to show you how truly bad that offense was. Seven points. Absolutely nothing to show for on offense. And their defense, which they're usually built upon, is no longer anything close to what we can expect from a Bill Belichick defense. Miami's going to win some games this year. They shouldn't, I think, simply because Tyreek Hill adds a much-needed wrinkle to that offense. That team, though, you watched that Miami Dolphins team yesterday, and you think to yourself, wow, you know what? They really could threaten the Bills, not threaten to the extent of winning the AFC East. I I think there would be a lot of work needed to be done in order to get to that level. But they could definitely threaten the top of the AFC if they just had a better quarterback. It is remarkable how much a quarterback matters in this league, even when you have a great roster. Miami's got a pretty great roster, and we saw a lot of that on display yesterday. Tua Tagovailoa holds that team back. And you see how much better they can be with better players. I mean, just the addition of Tyreek Hill alone made that team look much better than I saw out of them yesterday, or last year under Tua. But it's just, you're saying bring on Buffalo. You're saying this. I get it. I mean, fans do this stuff all the time. But if you want to compare Miami to Buffalo, you you simply, you simply cannot do it. You watched the Bills the other night. You watched the Chiefs yesterday. You watched the Chargers, even though it was a closer game. You see the quarterback talent. I mean, hell, even, you know, Derek Carr is, is far from a bad quarterback. He's a top half quarterback in this league. Justin Herbert makes him look like a schoolyard kid. Matt Stafford, he's a top half quarterback in this league. And Josh Allen makes him look like he should retire. When you're watching the Dolphins versus the Patriots, it just came down to one roster was much better than the other. You watch Mac Jones versus Tua, and nobody's saying, man, I'll tell you what, Tua's making Mac Jones look like uh, uh, like the last pick of the draft. No, they're both very mediocre. I'd give the edge to Tua, but that really comes down to the fact that he's got much better weapons to work with, a much better offense to work with. The AFC East, though, all but wrapped up. I mean, the AFC East is all but wrapped up. Like I said, I would bet my entire soul on the fact that the Bills will wind up winning the AFC East.